What is going on, everybody? Bobby Five, my man, Eric Sheetaber. We're going to be talking through tonight's Wednesday's NBA slate. Really disappointed. Um, only played one one entry in the alley oop last night. Had a chance to win it. Uh, was in first place, and then there was some back and forth with stack corrections and stuff uh, going on towards the end. I thought I was going to get one in my favor because ESPN and and all the other things had had Looney with the extra block and the rebound, but then they all took it away. So uh, I basically was two two point two point five points from uh, winning it. So that would have done the job. Finish fourth, which is which is nice to finish fourth. The problem is this is on on Tuesdays and Thursdays they have the uh, the, the huge payout differences on DraftKings, like you have the yeah. 50K for first, 5K for fourth. So it was a good, profitable night. Could have been better, but at the same time, got the lucky overtime in the game where I stacked seven players. So can't complain too much. Um, Sheets, how you doing? And uh, do, do you want to do you want to do you want to put, put you talk about your lineup at all? Or do you sure, wanna... sure, sure. I'm happy to do that. Let me just let me pull it up real quick. Um, it's pretty straightforward. It's sort of what I said I was going to do on the on the live show when we were going when I was going yesterday. Um, I was I was saying that like that it's really hard not to want to just stack up that entire game. Are you, are you sharing? Are you sharing? Your I'm going to in a second. I'm just, I'm oh, just okay. pull up my thing. Um, let me just make sure this is the right one, right? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. So basically, I, I really, you know, I, I got the lucky overtime because I, I, I literally had seven players in this game and all the seven that were playing. Um, what I didn't have was Middleton who went crazy, but he only played, he had a hard 24 minute cap, didn't play the overtime. So it was, a uh, it was looking pretty good there for a little bit. And, uh, Looney was great, but that extra, that extra block and rebound would have been enough to win it. So kind of disappointing. You can see we're all bunched up here at the top. So I thought I had a really good shot. Um, also had had a lot of other lineups that did really well with uh, with Blake instead of Muscala. A couple two v two like Blake and uh, Okogi instead of Looney and Muscala. Sort of evened out to the similar number of points. But this was a, this was like the, the core of a lot of my builds. And I, I literally don't usually do that where I take seven players from one game. And I realized when I when when all all the news happened that Holiday and Giannis were going to get lower lower owned because this this perception that was going on on every show that was. That was happening and every person was there's no way no boston can keep it close anymore so uh instead of Giannis, Giannis i think was going to be 50 percent owned i think he got down to 27 percent and drew holiday i think would have been 15 or 20 percent owned and he went down to eight percent so that was my only real differentiators it wasn't like a i didn't go for any huge like way off the board plays um i just wanted to try to stack it within the game that i felt like the mo most reasonable in a way that i didn't think anybody else would and sure enough nobody else did it in this tournament so it was a it was a fun ride, and hopefully we have better results tonight. So, so I want to share my screen for a minute because this is right. this is a this is a tribute to Rody actually. All right, uh, go ahead. Um, so, first of all, I did put in a couple of things before I left for the night, uh, just to see what would happen. And this was the um, this was actually the you know what? Just pause it for a second. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, no, no problem. Pause. We're back. All right, so. This was in the box out. I ended up getting like tenth, um, and uh, this was this this was it. Kind of got passed by some guys like at the end here, um, this, but it was really good. I mean, we got uh, three hundred fifty-seven points. We ended up with uh, with with Herder doing pretty decently, and I I didn't get to these Blake Griffins. I didn't even know that we were supposed to play Blake Griffin or Mascala. I didn't even get to that. Um, yeah, you weren't paying attention to the news with Horford, right? But yeah, but you know, I ended up with Wendell Carter, who who was pretty good. And yeah, I, this is this is like the roadie special. He's just like, dude, why didn't you just put this in the freaking alley oop? You would have won by a point and a half. So, yeah, if I if, if, I wish I would. Yeah, if I, if I took that logic to all my my other ones, <laughs> my ten dollars. I would have won the alley oop five times last night. I mean, five times a night. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but no, awesome. right. And it's, but that is no, that's a beautiful lineup. Um, obviously, a slightly different build than mine, but I, it's a really, like a really, really nice lineup that I actually was one I was, I sort of was fiddling with a similar thing. I loved Kevin Herter last night and I just didn't end up playing him because I stuck the other in them in my big ones. But, but yeah, it, it is always funny how the different tournaments do make a difference. And also, that I also feel more comfortable. I mean, we could talk about this some other time, but I think it's important for people who are playing strategy wise that look, the, the fewer people you have in a tournament, the more chalk you can go with. It's, it, I know it doesn't sound all that, all that are incredible to revolution, you know, it's not like a big revelation, but it's, it's important to know that. And that's why I think you can go, you know, you can go with more chalky things in some of these things than, than you can in, in the, in the million person tournaments. Um, I'll, I'll tell you something else, which is real. I mean, it's, listen, it's, it's pretty, I mean, listen, I'm still playing whatever it is, but it is pretty intimidating to see. Like I've, I've played like three lineups in this. 
And look at all these guys freaking that finished ahead of me, like 52 lineups, 48 lineups. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is rough, man. <laughs> this, is, this is tough business, like all these guys. And these are not like bad players, you know what I mean? Like these are all no, it's tough. players. It's, it's, it's tough out there. <laughs> it's it's so. really tough out there. It, it is. And last night, I mean, the same thing. Uh, I, Eddie, the, 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 the two guys who passed me at the end, they, they max entered and, and it's tough to, yeah. it's tough to compete with all their lineups. You think you've got it figured out. And then all of a sudden something, somebody has 10 quick fantasy points you never considered because it's yeah. not a variation of, of that lineup or whatever. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, we're, we're, so, so, uh, we'll talk about this. So this is what I call again, the springboard uh, theory, springboard theory. And this is, it was comes back like a long, long time, but I've applied it to, to, to Bobby Firestone here is that like when, he, when he's struggling a little bit, he doesn't like break out like, like with one huge score. It's always like one kind of like almost score, then the immediate springboard into the big one. So that's why I always would say like, if there was like a, a slate with like, like a big, huge tournament, you know what I mean? Like coming up, like the last thing you want to do is win like 50,000, like the day before, you know, like, like you want to like springboard into that. So so, so Bobby did like an excellent job of intentionally like losing first yesterday to go to like and come in fifth because he knew that he would sacrifice the 50 to win the 250 tonight. Okay. Right. So, that, that so, was the plan. so, so that was the plan. Um, and if, if you don't believe, I believe that you, you, I might actually go up to the $48 and 48 cents in my state. <laughs> uh, so we, I, I'm, I might be feeling it, you know, we'll see. Um, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll 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 get into it. Oh my God! It's already seven hundred thirty-five people out of twelve hundred. I probably should get in there. I reserved one, but I'm going to reserve a cop. I'm trying to play. Oh, one. let's go. We're going for multiple. All right, let's do that. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'm going for it a little bit. All right. it's a big slate. You know what I actually think I like? I like they've been. Um, I don't know if I like it, but but it's it's interesting at least. They've been making the um the lotteries less less of a buy-in. Like they had um. Yeah, they're having the, this this the mini week. I do like it, by the way. I think it's a good yeah. it's a good look. It, it's kind of fun to play them. Um, yeah. I, I just haven't been doing the max enter thing and I'm yeah. focusing more on the big ones. Um, yeah. but all right, well, let's get, let's get into this one. This is a, certainly an interesting slate. This is, this is, this, listen, this is one of those slates where I talk about this a lot. It's like, if you win, if you win the, the, the 250,000 here, I mean, you, you earned it. I mean, this right. is a, this is a big full slate with a lot of news that's out there and a lot of news that's pending good mix of studs and mid range guys. And, and, uh, Goes all the way down. So just just so you guys know, um, at eleven o'clock, I'm gonna be going live to uh, to sweat all this stuff. Okay. Um, it's gonna be halftime of 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 Lakers of New, Lakers New Orleans, um, and I'll take it right down to the end. Now again, with any luck, we'll be sweating. You know, somebody we know in the top uh, parts of these contests, but at the very least, I'll just sweat whatever and. Tell you, my goal in this is maybe one day somebody who doesn't even know who we are, like sees it, and then like they'll say, "Oh, dude, I'm deep in this," you know, whatever it is. And yeah, yeah. whatever, you know. So, so I and I enjoy doing. It. I'll do the play by play, uh, uh, and I'll be uh, up doing that tonight. Um, and whatever else going on, if there's like a tennis thing that's let's set the finish, a hockey thing, but the focus is going to yeah, be on this. Finishing, uh, finishing thoughts on on golf. <laughs> okay, so let me tell you what it right. But can I tell you something? What I did in golf? What's that? So. You're gonna like this. So for those of you that watched our um our video yesterday, and I talked about about ways to leverage stuff. Um, I can't give you everything because it's like too easy to duplicate. But what I, what I did, and you can use Saberson to do this, is I built like, and I'm not gonna do this exactly because it's gonna change. But I built a 150 lineup portfolio, and this is what I did. First thing I did was I took the 10 golfers we put in the contest at the end. Mm -hmm. And I, and, and I shuffled and I said, give me all combinations that have six of those. Right. Oh, but I couldn't use all, like all of them because some of them would be sure. so cheap. Yeah. Like, whatever. So I put a minimum of 49, five salary on those. Uh -huh. And that actually turned out to be like 26 lineups. And then what I did was I did a, um, a, a rule on Saber Sim that we had to do min five. Okay. Actually it wasn't min five. It was exactly five. So I had already the six for six and min five and I built 40. Then I did exactly four and I built 40 and then I filled it out, whatever. So it's a whole portfolio of lineups, completely leveraging our contest picks. Again, I don't know if I'm actually going to put all that in exactly like that, but that's something I'm telling you, this is, that's something you guys can do. If you really, I don't think I want to get lazy, but you want to use Saberson, you want to use your own stuff and you want to use our best picks. Then what I did, like, if you think about this, I did the first 26, then the 40 with five, then the 40 with four, 
And then I still had another 80 line of 70 lines up to go. Those lines, I just did the straight, you know, what I would put in. Yeah. I didn't, wasn't going to yeah. do that, you know? So and there's like, so many ways you could use the, the tools to like kind of, to kind of, kind of make this, make this fun. Yes. And, uh, uh, and uh, yeah, that's so, that, so, so as you were saying, yeah, we might get some late golf thoughts in here, but I'll be, I'll be up at 11 o'clock to be, to talk about what I would. Love it. Um, I hope, hopefully I'll be able to join you. I think, I think I might be tonight. Okay. Um, so, all right. With that said, uh, let's get into the, the the game sheets. Why don't you start off? Because we've got right off the bat, we've got the the dream that the, wh who's been our our normal centers for the last few couple of weeks. The guys we played every time against each other here tonight. What are you doing here with this game? Okay, so uh, my top point per dollar play on the board right now would be Devonte Graham again. Uh, and he, they've been taking pull, taking him off the bench and playing him you know, 26 up to 30 minutes, you know, depending on how he's doing. Now, again, this is, there's a lot of news that can come, you know, whatever. So, the, so I say my point, best point top point now, I mean, whatever. I would like to throw in that he is going back to Charlotte um, just, just for funsies. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, so uh, I will, I will throw that in there into the mix as well. Uh, it will be a nice high, high paced game. And I think he's extremely strong play now, 45% ownership, which is what I'm looking at right now. Is not exactly whatever, but there's gonna be so much other stuff that happens um, that I think other value will show up, and he's not gonna be as high owned. But whatever it is, it's an early game and all that stuff. But I do like him. I do like Collins again. Um, you know, if, if he's playing still thirty minutes plus at fifty one hundred, that's totally reasonable. Um, and as far as Mark Williams goes, you know, this is what this is this is what happens with Price, man. I mean, you know, he, now it's fifty three hundred, still a good play. But it's not like, you know, it's not like a lock button play. Uh, Lamelo uh, is still an extremely strong play. And that's where I'm going to kind of start is Devontae Graham, uh, maybe Mark Williams and Lamelo Ball. Yeah, I, I, I definitely I understand it. the Devontae Graham thing. I think there's a really good pivot in playing Bronham on the same team. Um, I, I actually think that that's actually a really reasonable idea if you wanted to take like a shot. And I actually think it, it's not impossible you could play those two guys together uh, just because of the, the way that their lineup is with the guys out and the guys who have been traded. Um, if anybody else is out for, for San Antonio, I'm going to have a lot more interest in this team because I love this matchup. I feel like Keldon Johnson is, is also very cheap. And if this game could stay close, I mean, this is we don't get that for San Antonio every day where they can stay close. We don't get that for Charlotte every day. So I do kind of want to like, you know, have, have a lot of exposure here. I'm even okay with the, like, I'm, I'm not anti the, the Mark Williams price either. I think that I, I would take shots on both he and Collins. And I pro like, let's just say I'm playing three big lineups on DraftKings. Uh, Mark Williams probably ends up in one of them as of right now. Um, I would say that Devontae Graham probably ends up in one of them. And I would say that Zach Collins ends up in at least one of them. Um, probably right for, for right now. Uh, I do like that. Like Lamelo has been unbelievable. This price is a lot, but like we've we've seen that he can obviously pay this off. So uh, Lamelo and and then Gordon Hayward with the out of just just had a completely crazy efficiency game. PJ Washington also looks like a good play. This is a really stackable game. Terry Rozier. I feel like you could get a lot of exposure. We're just gonna have to see how it relates to everything else we have uh, later today because this game does feel like a a potential stacking spot right off the bat. Which hey, it worked well well last night. <laughs> Maybe I'll try it again. It did. Um, all right. What do we have next here? Sheets on your board. We've got Indiana, uh, Indiana, Chicago. Excuse me. Yeah. All right. Uh, what do you got here for me? <laughs> well, you have um, DeRozan's not going to play, right? So uh, Levine looks to be like a really good play at eighty five hundred, and Booch looks like he's probably a really good play as well. You also are going to get probably a decent value projection on um, whatever his name is, Caruso at 3,400. And uh, I think all those guys look pretty decent. Uh, Indiana, um, nothing stands out right away except, except for, except for the, um, the, the, the center situation. You know, you got Turner is questionable and Tice is questionable. Um, so, I have to take a look at that. If, if they all play, I probably don't don't play them. Uh, but if any one of them are out, you know, Isaiah Jackson is going to be a really good play. And if obviously if Turner's out 
add, obviously turn and Tice are out, then Jackson is is an extremely strong play. And then then we can start talking about also maybe Jalen Smith and Brissett. You know, like this, when when those guys are out, you know that that's when those guys come into into play. Um, but the the guy that I always keep getting to on Indiana, um, just as kind of an okay play, is, is Mathering. You know, he's forty eight hundred and 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 looks to be really popular. But um, that's where I'm at. Uh, so the 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 main the main studs from Chicago, that being Levine and and Vooch, Caruso as the value, and then Indiana, we have to watch the center position, and maybe uh, Matherin would be the best overall play if there were no injuries. Yeah, I'm going to go out and say that I think that, yet again, I am going to to, to, to – I like, I, I'm, I'm fine with uh, Matherin. Uh, Vooch and Levine, like, this should be a great spot for at least one of them. Kind of hard to know like what to, what to do with that because I I do like them but there's other plays like it's not like they're as obvious as I sort of thought they would be when I when I first looked at the slate today, um, their projections aren't quite as strong as you might imagine, but I so I like the idea but I still like the idea of, of, of one of those two, um, and I really like uh, I really like Halliburton I, I think that Halliburton is a terrific terrific play I mean. We, we we're getting his minutes are back and uh you know we saw a couple of like sort of duddy kind of games he played great the other night he put up 60. Uh, I think he's in play at, at 9500 and more so in play on FanDuel at, at 8900. I think that's where you want to play him especially because he can get steals and stuff like that that uh that, that that'll get you there. So I I'm very big with uh Halliburton but mainly as a FanDuel play even though I still do like him on DraftKings as well. I think he was the second highest scoring player on the slate the other night when uh, he was bare like I think on DraftKings he was like two percent owned, um, so I can get on board with Halliburton as potentially a, a tear down spend to play on the other side of a Levine Vooch. Are you getting to any of the Bulls value? Um, I, I I didn't, but like I'm I'm willing to reconsider a long shot Drummond play, um, a Caruso play, uh, Son Mu. I just don't think I'm like excited about any of those guys. Nothing for you, right? Yeah, I mentioned Caruso. Oh, no. um, as 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 a possible value, and I see I see Drummond in my board on my board, but uh, just it's just not something I I usually play. I mean, you know, it's a uh, yeah, it's hundred game slate. And, you know, we're we're counting on sixteen minutes and twenty four fantasy points. Both of both of them can, or it could be sixteen minutes forty fantasy points. You know what I mean? It's definitely right. possible. Um, but that's just not my thing. I don't think play Drummond. No, for the most part, I'm with you. I just just wanted to throw it out there. Yeah. Um, cause by the end of the day, my guess is he gets forgotten and on these giant field things. Like if you're playing the, the lottery type of tournaments, I think he's always a good play in those tournaments. Um, <clears throat> unless there's like just obscene other value everywhere else. All right. Next up we have Detroit, Boston. Um, this is going to be a big question mark, right? Yep. Uh, what are we, do- what do we do here with Boston? We're still going to have Tatum smart. Uh, I think we're gonna have Tatum and Smart. Uh, I'm not exactly sure about that. Um, uh, Smart is actually targeting a return tonight. Um, That's what I said. I, th- I think. Oh, Smart, you actually have his. Oh, I have Smart as doubtful. Okay. It says he's targeting return Wednesday. I mean, I, I couldn't. I don't know why anybody would do that. It's the last game before the the All Star break. You know. If you're like just hurt and like why, why just stuff in one game before the All Star break? If it were me, I mean, I would just sit. You know what I mean? Like, I would yeah. just have the guys just sit. But um, that's my opinion. I, I don't know what what's going to happen with that. And Tatum, they don't know whether he's sitting or not. You know, same same thing. Um, uh, it seems very strange that they would sit the they would play them on the front they would sit them on the front end of a back to back on a nationally televised game against the number one team. Alone. And then play the last game before the All-Star. And then play, you play, you come home and play against Detroit. If they do that, I don't, that just makes me sick. You don't want to play the, the real game. You want to play the other game. And, and, and just 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 play your guys if you can. Um, or don't play them. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, I, I wouldn't understand. I can understand Marcus Smart maybe getting some minutes in or something like playing like, like low minutes. But um, I also think Derek White is legitimately questionable tonight. So... Yeah, he didn't even get on the plane. Yeah, so I don't even know if he's even going to be there. So this is going to be one I have to revisit. Chicha, are you going to be around at six? Or I'll, I'll, I will. I'll be... All right, so we'll, we'll be there at six and, and go through some of this because it's really hard to do this early in the day. The main thing is, though, you're going to want Boston players again. And it's just a matter of how many and which ones. 
Uh, Grant Williams, Malcolm Brogdon immediately stand out. Uh, but yeah, we'll look, look, at how many, look at how many minutes all these guys played. It's just crazy last night. Yeah. Well, I mean, with the overtime, yeah. Right. But the guys like Pritchard didn't play, you know. Blake Griffin didn't play that many minutes, actually. Um, so it, it is interesting to see a little bit what they do here. Um, and Horford, I'm guessing, will play because he didn't play last night. But <clears throat> I don't know, man. This is definitely a – Definitely an issue when I, I Robert Williams, I don't know what they're going to do with him. They did that weird sort of we'll play him 15 minutes thing last night. That was really strange. Um, so I, I'm going to have to revisit this whole game later. And then on the Detroit side, um, you're going to have some opportunities for runbacks. Are, she, are you getting like I'm looking at Saberson's projection for Jalen Duran, who, you know, I love, you know, I absolutely love this guy. But how can we really project him as a median average at 40? That just seems kind of crazy. I'm mean, having. I got him at 32. That makes more sense. <laughs> um, I think what's an interesting, uh, interesting thing is what to do with with what to do with James Wiseman. Um, well, there's nothing to do right now. Jalen Duran's one of the best young centers in the league. They're not going to immediately just give his job away to Wiseman when 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 Duran is a rookie. This is what Detroit got themselves into the mix of. They they decided to go for. They they have 700 bigs and. They're going to have to make some decisions at some point, but I, I don't think like Wiseman might do something tonight. Like it's sure that's possible, but like, I, 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 that's just a hugely speculative, like he legitimately like might play like 10 minutes. So I don't know. I can't, I can't do it on this big of a slate personally. I do think Duran, uh, Ivy, Bogdanovich, Stewart, Hayes, all those guys are reasonably priced. Uh, Hayes would be my preferred one if I had to pick one. Along Hayes or Ivy would probably be my guys. Uh, Stewart is also extremely reasonable at 5,200. Um, no Sadiq Bay does help all these guys, but they still have Diallo. They still have Burks. They've got a lot of guys that are going to play minutes. It's just a matter of who's going to produce. So uh, probably best to revisit this one later on when we have some some clearer thoughts on Boston. I think by by six, we should know at least a little bit about what's happening. Yeah, we're going to have to revisit this whole game. And, and uh, I'd like to think that at the very least, they'll have – information by by seven right um by the time you have to decide on the first two games at least um, that right. would be that would be nice mm -hmm. i think we'll have at least portions of it we did yesterday which for all in, in all fairness boston did a nice job of letting us know at least at least when they when they could the robert williams thing was a little bit weird with the starting lineup but that was the only thing um new york and atlanta all right chiefs what do you think about your knicks here um it's it's a kind of annoying trend that I'm just not getting to any Knicks in the last like three weeks. I think in in, in fantasy, um, I don't know exactly why, but maybe they're just being priced fairly. And you know, that 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 period of time at the beginning of the season where they were start they were playing fast and everybody was generating fantasy points. I guess that's that's gone now. I don't know. Um, so I'm really not getting much of anything. I'm not getting much of anything from New York. Not getting much of anything from Atlanta either. Um, I mean, I don't know. You like anything here? Not, not, not especially. I, I mean, I think that Julius Randle always has a ceiling, but like, I, I don't think I want to play him at ninety nine hundred. Uh, I do think that no one playing Trey Young is always just going to pique my interest, especially because he's been like he shot seven for eighteen and put a fifty two the other night, put fifty eight the game before that, sixty six the game before that. I can get behind Trey Young at 9,600. I know it's not at the, it was the funny part is if it was at the garden, we would be talking nonstop about it. Yeah. But, yeah. We, but why not? I mean, let's, let's, let's play a little bit of Trey Young. I think that's, that, that's a very reasonable spend up in the same realm as, as the, uh, as the Halliburton play. And I, I think they're very similar in terms of like, they both have plenty of upside to get there. They don't project especially well. They're going to be completely unowned. And both of those guys, I really like a lot. Um, so I, I'm on board with, uh, with getting some exposure to those guys. It's kind of scary because like, if you're going to play like guys, let's say I played a Trey Young and, uh, and what's his, what's a call lineup with all the chalk Halliburton it means I'm giving up like Lamello, who's only 800 more, who's basically like, feels like a lock for 50 plus. <laughs> um, but these guys definitely, uh, definitely could get there. So I, I, that, that's what I'm keeping open, open mind to. I also think DeJounte Murray at 8,400, if you want to take some tournament shots is not bad. Uh, same thing with John Collins, but but nobody who's a priority for me in this game, just like Trey Young as a low owned option. Um, Miami Brooklyn, yeah, Miami Brooklyn. Um, 
you have Butler and 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 Bam who look like kind of reasonable-ish mid-range plays. Um, they're look, I, they're 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 competing as far as like um, price goes with guys like Vooch and Levine, um, which is tough. Um, but they're they're they would be the best plays for me in this game. I wouldn't drop to the value here. And Brooklyn, I'm just I'm just not getting anything. I mean, Miami again. You don't you don't score a lot of fantasy points against them. So, um, if anything, I'll I'll probably end up getting to a Butler or a Bam just because of the you know, depending on how many lineups I play. But I'm certainly not making either of them a priority. Yeah, so it's just interesting to think about real quick, like because I was I was trying to think why aren't they like. The projections are obviously worse, but really, like, you have the same thing again. You still have no uh, Oladipo, no Lowry, and no Hero. Um, you've got you, – Butler's price is only 300 more than it was the other night when he had a monster game. This is – you know, to keep them in games and, and to play in tough games, you're, you're going to need – you're going to be Butler down the stretch. So even if he gets out to, like, a bad start, you don't – you still can trust that he's probably going to get there. Um I, I kind of like Butler as another one of these plays, and I like him a little more than Bam, but I'm good with Bam. And I think Max Struss is is very like reason like 5K. Like I'll just say, if you just took the games they had the other night, yes, they have more bodies available, but that may not matter because these guys are going to play the important minutes anyway. I mean, Struss put up 40 the other night; he's 5K. Uh, Jimmy Butler put up what 53; he's 8800. Um, and 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 this matchup isn't bad either. Bam has not Bam probably hits his the number he's expected to hit like less than it like a lot of these spend ups and somehow still keeps getting owned. And it's a terrible matchup for him. So I don't really love understand. Like Claxton's actually been unbelievably good this year and that they've been good in general against bigs. But I, I can get behind the stress and 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 butler part, especially. So I definitely am interested in taking some shots on those guys. Um, I am not interested in anything from Brooklyn with the potential exception of talking myself into some Dinwiddie or Cam Johnson, but that's pretty much it for me. Brooklyn just has, they've got like 75 guys who are supposed to play tonight. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> like, I don't know how many guys you're allowed to have on a basketball team anymore, but it seems like Brooklyn has twice as many. <laughs> they have so many players, but nobody who's especially great. Um, yeah. Dinwiddie as, as a large field play. That's pretty much it for me. All right. What do you got next? It's uh, I, have, I have Cleveland Philly. Well, we've got and, so many and, today. and with with nobody in in play for me, except to say that I listen. I, I have no proof of this, whatever, because he's played every other game. But I I, I wouldn't be surprised if Embiid finally took a took a seat. I mean, he's been he's been fighting an injury for like a while, and um, he fortunately they only had needed him to play 30, 31 minutes. Uh, they won that last game by like twenty or something like that. Um, but you know what? I mean, I, I guess I guess he'll play. He's played every other freaking game. I mean, I, I guess he's gonna play. Remember, he but, still really wants to win that MVP too. He was he still true. Won last year. And but against Cleveland, I mean, this 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 whole game just just feels like ninety nine ninety four. You know, I, I I don't have much of an interest in this game. Uh, I absolutely love Embiid. As I, I don't care that it didn't work out the last time. National televised game on ESPN again. I'm gonna play Embiid again. Um, I know I'm naming a lot of names. I'm going to have to spread out a little bit, but uh, I, I will have, I promise, I don't know about one of my big three yet, but I promise I will certainly have some lineups with Embiid and Mitchell. Um, I, I, I like Mitchell in these kind of games. I, I think that, you know, he get, he really gets up for the tough games and whenever they need him, he's sort of, sort of a little bit like the, the, the guard version of Jimmy Butler that when they need him, he can go out there and put up like 60. Actually, he can do a lot more than he can put up 70 real life points. But uh, so so I kind of like that. I really like I'm just going to stick with my Embiid, even in tough matchups and, and Embiid, like as much as this is a tough matchup for bigs, I don't consider Embiid like a normal big and I don't consider Jokic a very normal big. So those two guys, I wouldn't really downgrade as much against Cleveland as I would some other guys. Um, Embiid hasn't been putting up the, the crazy numbers, so people will probably be off of them. Another spend up I like quite a bit tonight, along with Donovan Mitchell. So I'm going to try to fade. I, my, that's I guess my first you know, looking thing so far is I'm probably going to fade some of the, the, the chalk at the, or whatever, whoever's chalky as a spend up. Cause I, I have so many guys I like that aren't going to be that popular. All right. Um, Houston and OKC sheets. What yeah, are you so, doing with Deshaun Tate? 
Yeah, you know, he he uh, once again, how did he end up doing in his last game? Because one, once again, he looks like, I'll give the same speech as before. I mean, again. he projects to be a very really good point per dollar play. And if I got to him, you know, with the rest of my lineup being perfect, I wouldn't be upset about it. But it's not like I want to start my lineups with, with, with Deshaun Tate. And that's what I said going into this last game. I, I honestly don't know how he did. What did he do? He had 24 yeah. minutes of 13 fantasy points. Okay. And that's certainly in, in the cards, you know, um, and on a big, big slate. Uh, well, let's, let's, you want to compare apples to apples sort of what, what, what do you like better? Uh, Deshaun Tate or Alex Caruso, for example, actually that's not apples to apples because Deshaun Tate, you can get small forward eligibility, but um, nonetheless, I think neither is my answer right now. Right. What's the difference. Right. And one of them's, you know, whatever. And what about the other, who's that other 30? <clears throat> um, well, Devonte Graham is cheaper, but he's not a forward. If you might end up getting Grant Williams, yeah, at, you know, or or Hauser, these guys. Um, anyway, I think Deshaun Tate. Listen, he's, he's it's it's a median projection play, you know, and and but how about how about he how about he shows he can crack fifteen before worrying before, right. before worrying about thirty? You know what I mean? Uh, that that would be nice. But what I, what I do like. Um, I do like Sangoon here. Now the problem though is is should be obvious as we've talked about the last like several several days, pretty much the whole season, that the, the position is rough. You know what I mean? Like to to, to play Sangoon at center. I mean, you you give up Embiid, you give up Jokic, not to mention you give up Collins and or or Williams if you want to play other other cheapos there. But just have I happen to like happen to like him. Um so I do like him. I have a question. Does um did Shea make the all-star team? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I was going to say, if he didn't make the all-star team, we could just plug him in. Um, is that, but, is that, it's a little late. Oh, you mean because like the last game before the break? Yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> but he's, um, but I think he's, he's totally reasonable. Uh, I like him. So it's Shea, Sangoon. You have to figure out what to do with Tate, but I'm not like forcing myself to do it. But I think both those guys look good. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm not, I, I, my problem with Shangoon is that seeing this ceiling with has been harder to do with, with, with Jalen green, but this is such a good matchup. I'm, I'm willing to like say, okay, well, I, I definitely want to like at least have exposure to one of Shangoon or green Shangoon with the matchup edge uh, green with the, like the fact that he's got the ball in his hands and, and could control everything. I think Jabari Smith is in play also. Um, this game is another one that you could go after if you wanted to. Um, I, I'm not as high on Shea, but I'm totally okay with it. I, I think this might be an interesting time to go back to an unknown Giddy. Um, but I think this game does have some stackability. You could the, the thing that worries me about the Dort play is like he since he came back, he hasn't played that many minutes. I wonder if they're being a little bit cautious with him last game before the break and all that stuff. So uh, that's probably all I, I get to, but, but I, but I, again, nobody, it's one where no one's a, a priority for me, but I certainly could see an argument for a game stack. Um, and I, I'm probably going to be off to Sean Tate unless I'm getting some stacks of that game. All right. Let's talk about Dallas and Denver. Um, interesting real life game. We get the Luka Jokic matchup, but we don't, uh, we don't get Luka with, without, uh, without our guy, without um, Kyrie. So, what are you looking at here, Sheets? How about Kyrie with the 58 fantasy points alongside of Luca? I mentioned this the other day. He scored 25 real life points in the fourth quarter, um, yes. which was basically, I think that was Dallas's. I don't think Luca had even ever done that for Dallas. Kind of, kind of crazy. Um, uh, it doesn't sound right though, but maybe, maybe but I think that they, that's what they were saying though. Anyway, um, I, I will still say that uh, I. Don't, I do not want to play Luca at these types of prices with uh, with with Kyrie on the floor. Um, now eleven seven is different than twelve three or twelve four, which he has been right. Right. Uh, but it's still just a lot of shots that he's not going to be taking. Um, now you could argue that he'll get the assists more. You know what I mean? His assist rate might go whatever it is. But um, I I'll put it to you this way. I mean, I was watching. It looked like he was just totally on fire, and he he got 59 and a half. You know what I mean? Like uh, mm -hmm. uh, against Denver, it's not so easy. So I, I, I'm not going to be playing Luca today. 
Uh, I'm not ready to play either either of them today. The other thing about that game, by the way, was that I guess it did ha- had to have helped Kyrie somewhat. Is that uh, Hardaway Jr. was out? Um, so that was, those those are some chucks that we're gonna that Kyrie was not gonna be taking. Well, Kyrie could take whatever he wants. He starts the ball pretty much every time Luca does. Anyway, yeah. uh, <laughs> probably off of the Dallas, and then on Denver, yeah. I mean, Jokic only reasonable to me. I mean, I I, I can't prioritize for example um Embiid over Jokic I have them very similar uh so uh I think Jokic is totally reasonable play here now again it's not the greatest this is not the greatest matchup in the world but Jokic is pretty much matchup proof and um I wouldn't say matchup uh, I don't want to say worst matchup in the world I mean like it's just a, usually a slow game you know when Dallas plays and Denver doesn't play so fast either so mm-hmm. um but I do think Jokic is just on par with him. It's not a slow game anymore. I'm going to just jump in real quick. Dallas, right. will, be, Dallas will be one of the fastest paced teams in the, in oh, the and they'll probably be maybe the worst defensive team in the NBA. One of them. Um, you put Luca and, and Kyrie in the backcourt. That means your defense is so. bottom of the league uh, in their, in their two games together so far, they have put up 128 fantasy points, 128 points, I believe in each game, which is right. season, I think th- somewhere around there anyway. Um, Season highs, oh yeah, 128-121. Um, I think they had one game earlier this year where they scored 127-129. So basically like right near their season highs, their season totals. The pace is faster. The defense is awful. Yeah, Dorian Finney-Smith is one of the best perimeter defenders in the league. They lost him. Um, they, 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 they have guys like Christian Wood who doesn't play defense. So they, they've just got a bunch of non-defenders on a team with a defensive-minded head coach. So it's really interesting to see how this is going to play out. Uh, shouldn't we assume Jamal Murray is out? Like... And that was the only thing I was going to say is the two the two wild cards you have are Aaron Gordon and Jamal Murray, um, yeah, from uh, Denver to see what why are we presuming he's out just because he hasn't played in a while and it's the yeah, last game of the All Star break. Yeah. yeah, so if he's in fact out, then um, who have we been who 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 have you been playing since then? Jokic. <laughs> oh, there you go. Well, Jokic is a good player, so uh, I have no problem with that. Jokic and. Uh... It hasn't been the Bruce Brown hasn't hit the big numbers that we you know you might want, um, but this is going to be a better matchup than those ones. But I think Jokic is the main the main one you're looking at. Um, if both of them are out, Christian Braun is probably a good value, and no one ever plays him. He's put up you know every time you get both those guys out, like he put up twenty three and twenty seven the last two. He's thirty five hundred um, with Ford eligibility. So Christian Braun is another one I would consider as a late like. That's one thing you can do is if you do happen to get the news in time, you could play like the Deshaun Tate at small forward, and then you could always move it over to Christian Braun if uh, if if they if you get Murray and Gordon out. Uh, but it would probably have to be both of Mur- Murray and Gordon, in my opinion. All right, Laker time. Well, LeBron is claiming that he's targeting return. I can't imagine why. I can't. But, uh, they can't lose games anymore. <laughs> Oh well, that could that 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 that's right. Uh, right now, I don't have him a, with a projection, so I don't know what to do with it. Uh, although, and then and then I guess Davis, they have him kind of middling also, so we're gonna have to see. I think that if either of I think that if Davis plays without um without uh without LeBron. I don't care whether it's at home or at New Orleans. I think he's going to want to just do some work <laughs> against the Pelicans. So uh, I, uh, I'll, I'll be playing Davis probably if uh, if LeBron is out. Um, if LeBron is in, unfortunately, I think I'll have to take a pass on the on, on the Lakers side of it. I guess um, New Orleans again. We want to watch for that late like Jose Alvarado business, like like uh, we were able to figure out last time. Uh, in plenty of time. Uh, I'm not seeing the same type of kind of cool projection on Ingram. Is he not that I had him? He still looks okay, but I guess they moved him up like 500, so it makes him not quite as good. But, but, but you do have Ingram uh, Ingram playing, uh, used to used to play for the Lakers, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, That's the real narrative. I, I don't think, yeah, there's, and he, I, he's I don't think there's any narrative whatsoever with Anthony Davis and and – all he did so. was destroy the Lakers. That trade, all it did was destroy the Lakers franchise for the next 15 years. And uh, they they did exactly what he wanted and got him out of town, which basically 
put him on a team that that I, it just so, it, what they did was one of the stupidest things ever to trade to trade to make that trade when all you have to do is wait one season and not trade you know six legitimate NBA studs um, for a guy and then also however what five years of picks or six years of picks uh, first rounders. This is the most important game of the season. These every game that they oh. play for, for New Orleans is the most important game of the season against LA because they have okay. not, not only do they they, they need to win games uh, for, uh New Orleans to try and get in the playoffs, they also own the Lakers draft pick. So if the Lakers get in the lottery, that's, Ooh, that's cool. That's, a, that's interesting. Nice. Um, so this is the, these are a game you can you can pretty much count on anybody from New Orleans showing up. I love the revenge. I, I, I'm all over Ingram tonight. Uh, that's like the one of the, to me, one of the easiest plays on the slate. I just think you play him in this spot. Um, we still have McConnell as questionable. And, you know, because it's right before the all-star break, I would think that it's possible that he sits except for what I just mentioned. This is the, these are the important game. You need to win these games. Like you can get, you can, you, the amount that it does for you by not only leveraging, getting yourself up higher in the playoff spot, but knocking the other team back. I mean, the Lakers are really in danger of being a lottery team. So that, you know, New Orleans is going to want to make that happen. Um, so I, I think if they're, if they're going to try to if, if find a, you know, if you're, if you're 50, 50 on the column, I would lean, I would lean towards him playing because of that. Um, if he doesn't play, I love Ingram. If he does play, I love Ingram. <laughs> I still, I actually like McCollum too, if he plays. And, um, I have no problem with a little bit of Joe Val and Josh Richardson. So, uh, really going to depend on whether McCollum plays. And unfortunately we may not have all that news. But Josh Richardson, even if McCollum plays, I think I like a little bit. If he doesn't play, I'm into it. So I'm probably gonna, I'm probably gonna put Richardson as another placeholder guy in my lineups. But I really like this, uh, the Ingram stuff. And and I do, and for what it's worth, I think LeBron plays tonight. Just my personal take. And I think that uh, I still think that both AD and him and he are, are very reasonably priced. So I, I have no problem taking shots on either. I just have a hard time with AD versus. Jokic versus Embiid. I prefer the other guys. Well, and, and, and honestly, I mean, you could put LeBron in the in in the in in the uh, in the utility, and then if he doesn't play, then you have Dave. I mean, that's that's really easy if you want to. Do right, that. right, right. Well, the only problem then is you're giving up the leverage of well, not the leverage, but you're giving up some good center plays. And I think it is a pretty good center slate because you've got the value with the uh, well, you've got the mid range with Duran. You've got the value with. Uh, with uh, what's his name, Collins, uh, the medium value with Collins and uh, Stewart. Well, Stewart's a power forward, but I meant, uh, why can't I find him? I guess he's projecting worse than I thought. Um, uh, uh, Charlotte Center, uh, Mark Williams. Um, yeah, no, he's not projecting all that great. I mean, that, that, I mean, that, the price is just kind of creeped. You know, it's not 4K anymore. It's 5,100. It's just a yeah. little different. My guess is they got him a little bit projected too high on, on Saberson because they've got him at 33. So that still looks pretty good at fifty three hundred. Um, well, just, just for fun, let's let's build a Saberson lineup with the true DFS projections. We'll build okay. one hundred and fifty lineups. Okay, I haven't done it yet. What who, what do you think? What do you think we're gonna get? Uh, I think you're gonna get a ton of. Let me see real quick. Um, Tate, Devontae Graham, that stuff. I don't think Tate as much. I think you're gonna get all, all the Celtics, at least three Celtics in every lineup, probably. I don't think so because the way they work, they, they don't know who's at who's playing. So none of these guys are projecting like be that great. We'll see. But you don't uh, think projecting to be that great? Like 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 Grant Williams, I've got projected to score thirty plus fantasy points at forty four hundred, and that's pretty right, much so regardless we, of who plays tonight. Yeah, so we got ninety one percent Zach Collins right now, wow. and then seventy five percent Brogdon and Devontae Graham, assuming assuming everything was now. But again. I'm working on a Grant Williams projection of like to only 27, um, right. among other things. So, uh, uh, by I, the way, it's still pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, I, I find it hard to believe that um, if I played 150, for example, that I would actually play 90% Zach Collins. Yeah, um, interesting. That doesn't. That sounds like something I would probably, you know, probably tweak a little bit. I'm just look. I like to look and see who. If anybody that comes up here that we didn't really mention, oh, here's a guy that we didn't talk about at all. Um, Jabari Smith is actually showing up as as uh, as a part of lineups in here, which is I just didn't didn't anticipate that. Um, I kind of like Jabari a little bit, and everybody else kind of we uh, we we kind of talked about. Yeah, uh, let me let me real quick. Uh, did you did you look at um, did you look at Fanduel or no? 
Um, I, I, I took a little bit of a glance, but yeah, we can, we can talk about it real quick. Um, I, I know that uh, Halliburton stood out to me. There's a, there's a number of plays that are a little bit cheaper over on FanDuel today. Um, it, or more, or just make more sense because the way that the lineup construction goes. Brogdon looks even better over there. Yes, he does. Um, uh, Sam Hauser. I think Peyton Pritchard is going to end up being really popular by the end of the day because maybe I really think Derek White is may not play. Um, uh, other guys, uh, Busevich maybe makes a little bit more sense over there. Um, actually, most of it is fairly similar. Other than that, did we skip? A game because I am, we didn't talk about Utah Memphis I don't think um we did not <laughs> we probably, probably touch on that one real quick well hold on we're oh we missed totally missed it all right let's just well now we know which game is going to break the slate yeah there's so, just so many games let's tonight take, good call let's let's take a look at it let me see who we have um so I am seeing Xavier Tillman at forty two hundred as the 734th center possibility that we could play tonight. Um, uh, so that's that's as far as values go. Utah, value, I don't see too much. As far as spend-ups, I wonder if, if – uh, yeah, I mean, Jaws looks reasonable enough. You know, he's not – doesn't rate to be like a top play, but, you know, if, if you didn't want to spend all your money on, on – I mean, it's a hell of a price pivot off of LaMelo if you can get away with it. You know what I mean? Like, if if, if you, you could somehow get that game where 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 he goes off and LaMelo gets into foul trouble or whatever, or that game blows out or something like that, mm -hmm. um, certainly, I mean, I'm looking at John Morant, 4% Owen, and LaMelo, 25. Right. So, yeah, I'm glad we're talking about this. This could actually be kind of a kind of a cool pivot if you wanted to do it. Uh, it's to play job. Yeah, absolutely. And as far as like regular plays go, like I like Desmond Bain a lot. All the guy does is score 40 fantasy points every night. Right. Like just uh, he scores like, 40 fantasy points on like 40 real life points. Let's be. No, 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 but no, but he's but I mean he, I mean, he he's like legitimately good. Like well, not necessarily. I mean he's 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 actually got that's partly what's killing Jaws assist numbers. His assists have been his assist, assist totals have been great, and he's a good rebounder. Um so I like him in this matchup and um, I think Bain, Dylan Brooks is like, he's 4,300, which makes you feel like you should play him. If you want to feel like that, like you can look at his game log and maybe feel differently. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of plays in this game that, that make a lot of sense because Kelly Linux 300 more. Now no one wants to play him. That seems like a reasonable play. Walker Kessler had a dud game. Does that mean we don't have to play him? I'll take a shot on Walker Kessler. Um, Colin Sexton. He's 56 instead of 52, so we don't need to play him, I guess. But he still put up 31 or more in three out of the last four games in this same situation. So I, I'm okay with him. Um, there's just a lot of guys who I rate, feel like I rate as good plays and not necessarily great plays. Taylor Norton Tucker, if he was 3,700 or something, would be really popular again instead because he only played 18 minutes and only put up 20 last game. He's 4,300, so people are going to be off of him. These are all plays that are like guys who are good plays but are going to be overlooked and it's going to have to do a lot with the boston stuff because you're going to get the value from boston you want anyway it's not going to be the 3k value for the most part but it's going to be like the 4k ish value so it's going to make all these other plays look worse i would say try to include some of these guys with those boston plays and for what it's worth like to answer like i wouldn't have played a, like the boston stack on a slate like tonight very likely you know what i mean it's just so much there's just I, I would not say that I wouldn't play like a stack, but I, I don't want to stack seven out of eight from one game when you've got what 12, 13 games, 10 games tonight, but it feels like 15. Um, I, I probably wouldn't do a similar strategy tonight that I did last night, unless we hear like multiple guys are also out for Detroit or something. <laughs> um, I'm telling you that that was like almost like a sheet stack that you played last night. Like when you like, spent all the money, you know what I mean? Like, I don't give a crap. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like, but you know what? You get Drew at 7%, putting up 8 million fantasy points. Let's go. You know what I mean? Like, that's right, like, right. And when you see Boston's, it doesn't matter what Giannis and, and Drew have scored yet. When you see Boston's up eight early in the second quarter, you oh, know then it's you know. going to be a game. You, then know, you, know. you know those guys are going to get there at some point. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a bunch of big question marks for the for the Boston side, and that's going to be what dictates a lot of this. Well, later. but not only that, not only that, but the re another reason the game is not particularly stackable, you don't really, I mean, want to rely on Jaden Ivey and well, Don Bogdanovich going off. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Like, uh, right. at least Milwaukee, like, you knew it was you knew it was up. You know, you could play at the very least. You could stack with Giannis. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. Um, 
So I, I think Boston, you could play guys, but I don't, I don't, as far as if you were going to stack a game. Charlotte, Charlotte and New Orleans. Charlotte and New Orleans. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, not Char Charlotte and San Antonio, excuse me. Charlotte and San Antonio. O OKC. No, OKC it, in Houston, yeah. I don't know. This could be like what they call a stock picker's market. It could be like not like a non-stack thing. It's going to be who picks the best plays, you know? Um, yeah. I think Boston-Detroit is going to look like a stacking game by the end of the day, but we'll see. And now, well, maybe, maybe you get to you play C.J. McCollum with, with Ingram and, and, and Joe Val and then uh, – and then uh, – Hope Joe Bell plays more than 14 minutes. That'd be that would be nice. And then play LeBron or some, or Davis. Yeah. yeah. Especially, well, especially if LeBron's out. Yeah. Oh man. I still have a play both. Have a play both. Play Davis and, and AD. Let's just go. Stack, just, you know what? That's maybe that's what you do. You just stack the late game and then just find little pieces of news along. Hang on. It's, well, you know, that's very conducive to the late sweat show, but hold on, let's see. Uh <laughs> so let, let's see what, what this costs. If you played AD. Him, where is it? Where's where's Mitch Cullum and Ingram? 77 and 8. Oh, wait, let's let's do this right. We'll put him in the in the in the shooting guard. And then we'll put CJ in, in the point guard. So now 3150 left. Can't do it. <laughs> it's okay. Maybe you can't do it right now. You're right. right. You can't do it. Can't do it right but 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 let's say that like all the center uh, centers are out for Boston and, and, and then you uh you can play Griffin again at 3K. Um, yeah, and you get Blake Griffin at three K. You could play play him and, and Luke Cornett together or something. Like that. Or, or, or yeah, if Cornett if, if Muscala's out, but if, if Muscala's in and Robert Williams out, you could actually play Blake Griffin and Muscala together. We saw there you go time. Muscala. Oh, absolutely. Oh, this is easy. Right? <laughs> and, then, and then you got now you're up to thirty one. Griffin. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Going right. into the last game, I have fourteen fantasy points. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. All right. Well, good luck to everybody. We'll see you guys live at 6 Eastern. I know it's been a long one, but uh, let's make some money tonight. Uh, go on and end the first half of the season strong. Sounds good. Good luck, guys.